Today's guest is a songwriter, artist, and multi-instrumentalist. He took his talents from Montana to the place where it's all happening in Los Angeles, California. And with his newest song, Truth Is, he truly got to show his talent and ability to write the truth. A man whose wow. name has come up every time I have somebody on this podcast and ask who I should have on next. Please welcome today's guest, Mikey Ferrari. What an intro, man. <laughs> Dude, Shit. thank you so much for coming on, man. Thanks for having me on. I'm just so stoked to be here. We were just talking about how LA becomes a super small place the more people you meet. Absolutely. And you're the greatest explanation of that considering so many people, people I've had on this podcast, including Trent, Mm -hmm. And Kyle have both said your name. And my buddy Brad, who I grew up with, who's not even living in L.A., brought your name up. Small world, man. Man, you must you must be getting around. You know it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, dude. So, first of all, the the song Truth Is, that that was your, your last single, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Killer. Dude, Thank it's, you it's so, so much, good, man. man. I really appreciate that. I, I love what you're doing with the music. And I don't even know how to categorize it in the sense of, it feels like what, what will create a category versus fitting in one at the moment. Thank you, man. Um, it gives me rock vibes, like 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 rock and roll alternative with with the pop side of it that mm -hmm. that also kind of helps it become super digestible. Mm -hmm. How did you how did you get your start? How did all that start? So I mean, I guess like influences. Um, I grew up playing a lot of sports and tra playing travel sports really, and anytime I would go anywhere i was in the back of my dad's car and he you know it was like one of those old cars but it had like the flip down tv mm -hmm. and he had this old eagles like live recording yeah full band obviously in melbourne australia and anytime i went anywhere that's like what i was what i would watch and mm -hmm. so i just completely idolized the eagles and that was just my understanding of music as it is you know absolutely um so growing up, wasn't really in music at all. Played like a little bit of piano, but not much. And then when I was 16, 17, I... Sorry, let me backtrack a little bit. Yeah. I was definitely like a troubled kid. Um, was dis misdiagnosed as bipolar when I was like 14 or 15. And was like very overly medicated. Um, and it got really bad. So at the end of my sophomore year of high school, I got sent away and moved to Montana. And there was nothing to do. I mm -hmm. mean... Bro, when I said, like, yeah. every part of your day, too, is structured. Was it a wilderness program? So I went to wilderness first, and then after that was just, like, at this school with, like, 70 kids. No connection to the outside world. I mean, you're, like, on oh, lockdown. Yeah, yeah like, it, it was crazy, man. I talked to my parents, like, once a week, but I didn't talk to my friends for a year. Crazy. Yeah, like, sent, I think I got to send, like, a couple letters, maybe, like, eight, nine months in. Um, but anyway, it was, like you know, no internet, no, yeah. no anything. And a couple kids at the school played guitar and I was like, Oh, that's it. Yeah. That's like what I want to pick up. So I picked up a guitar and started learning chords, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And immediately it was, it just clicked, man. Yeah. You know, like I'm sure it was the same experience for you. And I also just want to hear like how, how music really clicked for you and how you got into it. Absolutely. Um, but for me, I feel so blessed the way that that went down because I, legitimately had no there was no other distractions you know mm. that that was the way that i started sorting through a lot of my mental health stuff was just teaching myself how to write songs like that was how i explained i didn't want to talk about it with anyone yeah um i feel like i keep to myself for the most part but yeah that is how i got into it and i guess with the basis of like eagles type songwriting i guess you know it's just like story first and I, I think when people ask me about my music i'm like i am a song guy all i care about is the song yeah and over especially like you know i put out truth is and then i got the opportunity to start working with like different producers and kind of found my people um and from that i've learned so much about how to t truly develop a sound and how to like direct people and getting to that common vision and that mm. goal. And I think as, cause I, I don't can like, I really don't consider myself a producer. I'm a songwriter first, you know? Yeah. So I think once I was able to start learning how to communicate that, um, I've gotten, so yeah, I'm really excited for you to hear the new music, honestly, man. Dude, I can't wait. And so I was talking to a mutual friend of ours and found out when you were writing that song, 
you wrote it in about 45 minutes while people were pre-gaming yeah. on your way to go to a club. Yeah. And I, I found it so funny because when you're listening to it, that's the story you get without, yeah. without, being, without knowing that story uh, prior. Yeah. And even like the beginning with, was it Kyle talking in the beginning of the song? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it's it's such a around. funny, that whole song is such a funny story, man. Um, we wrote a different song that day and we like went on this walk. It, I was like, I just moved to LA maybe. I was like three months in. Mm -hmm. And I was like going out to clubs and like doing that whole thing. And I really lost myself like bad where I was like, okay, what's happening Cause I base like my root core self and like the Montana version of myself. That's why I say that I'm, you know, raised in Montana. Cause that's really where I like got all my roots and Absolutely. what I like align with the most, you know? So I was, I just could feel myself slipping away from that version of myself that like fell in love with music and was doing things for the right reasons. And like was just genuine with people. Yeah. And I remember we like went on this walk. Have you been on like that that hike with Kyle before? I haven't done it, but I know what you're talking about. I, yeah, like right over by the ledge over there. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, and we, like, and I just remember like looking at LA and being like, God, I gotta either get out of here or figure out how to be myself. Yeah. Um, and we like came down. We, I was like, should we just like start drinking? Like, should we have some beers? And we like literally cheers and then like started the song and it happened so fast. And I hear you guys were going beer for beer. Yes. Pretty much per, yes, per we verse were. or per line. <laughs> per line. Yeah, exactly. And, um, and the production took a little bit more time. Yes. So, it, man, it started, that song started with me playing those chords and then Kyle chopped it up and kind of like made them a bit more sample. -y. It kind of sounded like a trap banger before. And I was making different, different music, obviously, still am. And that, I mean, like I said, that was before the pandemic. And then, maybe ooh, June or July of last year, um, hit up Kyle and was like, yo, we need to finish this. I need, this is like, this needs to be it. Because yeah. also at the time I was just desperate, man. I was like sleeping on couches. I didn't, I was just like, I need to put out a song that people will be like, okay, this guy can tell a story. Yeah. So I need to get in the room with him, et cetera, et cetera. I just like needed something to open doors. Cause yeah. I had like no, nothing going on for me. Your resume. Yeah, exactly. And I was like, I need this to be my start in this new chapter of my life and to to get me to work with people that understand my vision, etc. And so Kyle and I like came together and I was like, yo, I want it to like feel super folky. That's like what I'm into. Mm -hmm. And that's, I mean, we ended up there and then, you know, Inverness, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, dude, he's phenomenal. Such a, I mean, he's just like such a good hang too. He's such a So sweetheart. talented and yeah. I'm getting him on here soon. We're, we're talking you have about to. it. So I find it so interesting because being in LA and, and meeting people and getting to see other people's journeys, right. the thing that I realized the most is the time when people end up failing, or right. I shouldn't even say failing, quitting, because right. that's really the only way you could fail in this, right. is, so true, man. is those in-between times when you know you're able to do something, you just don't have the physical ability to show something to yeah. somebody. When you don't have the resume, but you know you can do the job. Yeah. And that's when people that's when people get hard on themselves. That's when people quit. And sometimes you do have to wait that extra day for that stuff to happen. You that stuff, you know, it's ten ten feet right. When when you're past the situation, you have to be ten feet back to be able to look at it and, and see it as a whole. Right. How did you how did you get yourself to kind of keep going when you're in a, a position where you felt like you knew what you were doing, you just didn't have the ability to show people it yet? To tell you the truth, man, music is such a, I mean, that's like what drives me. Mm. Um, I think I was in such a dark place before I found music. Music is truly like my purpose and like telling a story is my purpose and connecting with people is my totally. purpose. So I think, I just, I don't know, man. I feel like I just have always had this mentality from the second I picked up a good guitar and like was total dog shit i was so bad yeah my songs were so bad but i was like i know i can do this I, I don't know man it was just like this gut feeling where i was like if i don't do this i'll hate myself forever so i think that was the feeling that has continued totally. to drive me in a genuine way i don't know no i i respect that and i think that there's a lot of people a lot of kids out there who want to be you know sitting where you're sitting right now as far as being an artist and being able to get in rooms that you've always dreamed of getting in, you know, right. writing with people that are, that are, that are going to be some of the greats. Right. I think a lot of people don't see themselves being able to advance. And I think that's a big part of it is 
you know, if you're sitting at home right now and you don't have the abilities that you would like, right. you can bitch about it or you can go find them. You can go sit on YouTube and, and you know, I had Christian on before and we were talking about that. Like, if you want to learn guitar, go fucking sit on YouTube. Yeah. Like, everything you need to learn, whatever instrument, I don't care exactly. if it's guitar or the bugle or whatever the hell it is. Yeah. Like, it's there. And, and sometimes you need to be patient and you just need to be diligent. And that's yeah. it. Man, I, and I think there is something to be said about just loving what you're doing. I think that if you're like, oh, I want to be in music, I want to be famous, blah, 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 you're going to hate every step of it. But if you're like in it to create art that could last forever and in a hundred, you know, in, in 90 years when we're both dead, someone finds it and they're like, oh my God, this song changed my life, et cetera. Then you like, then you did it. You d it doesn't fucking matter. It's, mm -hmm. I think it's just like knowing that, I mean, for me, I create music to help myself. That is like what makes me so happy. That is like what gets me up in the morning. And like, that's what I look forward to when I go to bed. But absolutely, if, you know, and I feel like that is what was discouraging to me. Like when I first moved here was feeling like a lot or some of the people that I was like meeting anytime I would like go out would be, it just felt so like, it felt so ingenuine, you know? And I felt like I fell into that i guess i don't know where i'm going with this rant but no but i think you know what i mean if you love what you do then if you love what you matter. do you're gonna find a community of people to do it with yeah exactly and at the end of the day if you're around people who are working as hard if not harder than you yeah and who love something as much as you do you're not gonna stop yeah right. it, it, it becomes too addicting right you know and and I have I've had people on before who I respect and love and are as talented as it gets who do look at this as a job. Right. And, you know, that is a, that's a path to take if that's how you want to do it. They right. know they're good at it, so they continue to do it. Right. That's not me. That doesn't right. seem to be you either. Yeah, and I feel like once you start thinking that you're, like, good like that and it's a job, you, like, cut off so many pathways to, like, venture down roads you never thought you'd go and places mentally you never thought you'd go, you know? Absolutely. Um. That's so real, man. That's crazy. Part of that, though, is when you love something so much, you become aware of those little situations, of, of the course. little wins, of the little things down the road. You know, of course. everybody looks at a, a rock star. You're not looking at a rock star when they're 80, year old, 80 years old saying that was a rock star. You're looking yeah. at the videos of them at, a, at 20 years old and 25 and 30. Right. And when, when they were probably sleeping on couches, but that allowed them to get up into the studio every day and make music. So right. it was... That couch was a king bed to them. For, for real, that's how I feel. Yeah, I mean, you have to, though. This, for for the way that you want to do this, and the genuine, being a genuine, raw person in this industry, you have to live that fully for yourself. Yeah. You know, those experiences, all the stuff that, that are real to write about, right. come out of life. They don't come out of, out of these, these fun little pockets of easiness. They come right. out of the shitty, the shitty holes in the ground that you fall into and have right. to get out of. Right. And I think that there's no coincidence. I mean, at least for me, I love, I listen to like older music, you me know, as well. like, yeah, I feel like a lot of the current shit is like formulaic and very like, oh, this is what the story should be. So that's what we should, I don't know. I guess yeah. it doesn't feel as raw so, sort of speaking to what you're saying. So I think mm. just living your truth and speaking your truth. That's honestly, man, that's why truth is was such like a big step for me. Because I was like, okay, I can just be genuine and, like, people will like it. Before, everyone was like, oh, don't be the guy with the guitar, whatever, whatever, it's corny, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay, I don't see it like that. I just see it as, like, the guitar just happens to be my instrument that helps me tell my story. Yeah, it's like a vehicle. Yeah, it's a vehicle and, like, that is the thing about me that I believe in the most is, like, my ability to tell a story. Why would I not do that? And, like, when truth is was that moment, because I had, like, a little thing happen on TikTok which I'm so grateful for. And that was like the reassurance that I needed of being like, oh my God, I was right all along. Everyone else saying that I needed to do this, this, and this was full of shit. And like, I should always just trust myself and trust my vision because what is the point of being an artist? You know? It's, it's kind of crazy when you can look back with a little bit of hindsight and and see success in, in places that people tried to get you away from. Yeah. And when you stuck to your, to your own guns. Right. It's a really good feeling knowing that getting that reassurance that you were right and right. that listening to yourself is really the way to go through all this. And right. You know what? There's nobody here who's going to tell you how to write a good song because right. nobody's had your experiences and that's where the good songs are. Absolutely. Truth is, is an experience that you had, you know, it's, it's a, it's a time, it's a place. It's all, maybe it's, maybe it's multiple different times that kind of cumulate together. 
in, into this story, but like those were your experiences that created this. And without that, and without being aware of where you're at right. in life, how are you supposed to write a fucking good song? That's very real. I completely agree. So tell me about where, where you find yourself now. What, it, what does it feel like to, to start getting your feet really pushed in the ground and finding, finding your stance in this, in this industry? That's a really good question. Um, it's been a go, man. Uh, I've definitely struggled like a lot in the last, I feel really good right now. Mm -hmm. These last couple of weeks have been amazing. I've been able to like take a step back and like enjoy these couple shows that I've been playing and like test the songs and et cetera. But I was doing from the beginning of January until Super Bowl Sunday, I did not take a day off slash I was also doing two a days like some of the time yeah and I was like pushing sort of like to that job mentality and I hit this point where I was like am I even like a person am I like even living anymore like yeah. what is going on um so I think because I have so much gratitude for this like position that I'm in where like after the TikTok thing I had you know like a management come in and like people like champion me and be like we believe in you you can do it blah 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 blah. and i was like oh my god i've never had these people these like it felt like people like hopped on the mikey train for the first time and like made it go a lot faster and so i was like oh i don't want to slow down i you know what i mean it, yeah but i think balance is so important and i just like like i took a I don't know. I've definitely learned a lot. Like I definitely like took a relationship that I was in like to the drain because of like my mentality towards music, which is such a bummer. And I just think it's important to like live while I don't think you're creating art if you're not like living at the same time, if that answers your question. I think the job of an artist is to be aware of their surroundings in order to to explain that to others. Yeah. And if you're working so hard that you don't have time to be aware, then what is that work really doing for you? You right. know, where is that leading as far as you getting to express how you feel and having that outlet? It's like, you know, if you miss your therapy session right. enough times in a row, you're no longer going to therapy. And that's right. how I feel about it with music. If you're missing these experiences that you need to write about to sustain your, your happiness. Right. And, then then you're not going to those therapy classes you're not doing what you what you need to do to help yourself and it's all just figuring it out yeah and there's helicopters Some, sometimes it just takes a wake up call man i was on my way to a session in redondo beach and i was like 45 minutes into the drive and like my face went numb my it was like a panic attack i've never had before mm -hmm. i think it's just like important to mention because that is like very real and anyone that's watching it's super normal and you're a human being for it's, going through that it's you know? part of it yeah 100 percent. and like that is i have had so many of those in the last couple months just putting so much pressure on myself and i'm like really working on just like yo man this is like such a blessing to have this opportunity just yeah. enjoy it and don't i don't know i don't think you can i think if for me, if I'm putting way too much pressure on myself, I'm not even enjoying it anymore. And like, Absolutely. that's like why we're doing this, right? Because it's like so fun and you get to connect with people and make new friends and, you know. I I, I definitely can connect with you on the sense of the anxiety and, and these, these panic attacks that come out of those situations. I grew yeah. up being, you know, desperately dealing with depression and anxiety and, and suicide attempts and thoughts and all these things that oh, suck, but they also lead to my art and they're right. they're part of that and the whole the whole fucking game of all this is learning how to balance it right you know as a musician you have to learn how to how to do more than other people right but also do it sustainably like learn yourself to an extent where you understand what's pushing it too far right. and what's pushing it just enough right and it sounds like like that's what you're in the thick of it's you, all you're doing is is figuring out you yeah. you know and from my perspective, I, we don't know each other that well, but you're doing a fucking great job at Thanks, it. Thanks, bro. I appreciate it. And your music is phenomenal. Thank and you, like, man. you know, as long as, as long as the balance keeps being, keeps growing and you keep yeah. learning how to do that, dude, you're gonna, there's gonna be a day where you look back and you don't remember not having people rooting for your name. For sure. You know, and there's so many kids out there who I just want you guys to think real fast about he was he was a, a regular kid one day too you know like like you were sitting in school or, right. or in this program or at your house just right. wishing that you could be doing this and and just because you get to where you want to go 
doesn't mean it's going to make it any easier. Right. You know, that's just part of it. I would say it's also important to mention that I have not accomplished anything yet. I'm still just on my path, you know? That's the accomplishment. Yeah. Yeah, I, thanks, man. That's, that's so it. well said. What, you know, the goal is to be able to make music for a living. Yeah. Or at least, at least for me, and it sounds like for you as well. Yeah, absolutely. And you're making music, right. you know? Like, you're, you're doing that. And right. making music for a living doesn't mean that you can't also work a side job when needed. And, like, right. all these things that... that turn into the the day to day but like right. if you're if you're sticking to your guns and you're you're sticking through the bullshit right. to do what you love you made it you know for sure like that's that's success to me can i ask you a question please how how's like how has your mental health been this like m- music wise especially like getting through covid mm-hmm. and how do you like okay two part question yeah. how do you maintain balance also what was the moment for you when as a kid you're like going through all this different shit like that you found music and you're like oh hey, this is like how yeah this is it you know so i'll start with that one i i've been playing drums since i was three that's that's well i'm not good enough to really tell people that <laughs> but i'll there tell you, go, you um i've been playing drums since i was three and that's always been my my one and only express form of expression and and therapy Mm -hmm. and when i was going through hell i'd go sit in my basement by myself for eight hours and i'd hit the drums until my hands bled and when they would bleed i'd go band them up and i'd do it again and that for me was always my my release whether it was healthy or not i don't really know It, it worked at the time um and since then i've found vices that are healthy for me i go to the mountains uh two to three days a week Oh my God. Even if it's just for an hour. I mean, that's why I live over here in Glendale. So I could be close. It's a specific reason. And I try to camp. I try to camp once one day a week by myself. Oh my um, gosh. If not going, you know, a few times a month. Uh, I do that. I leave. I get up and go. I go to places where my phone doesn't work. So I can't have anything but my brain to, to fight with, you know? Right. Um, and I do this. I hear that other people who I look at on social media and all these different places. And to me, they feel successful. Yet when you hear them say that they're having hard days still, right. it kind of makes me realize that I don't need to look to get rid of the hard days. I just need to learn how to deal with them better. Yeah, for sure. Um, so that's kind of what I do. I, I, I separate myself from any ability to stop thinking about what I need to think about. Mm-hmm. And I make music. I mean, I'm a, I'm the kind of person where I'll, I'll make 50 songs that nobody will ever hear, but I made them because I needed to get that out. Absolutely, man. That's the point of making music in Dude, the first place. I love it more than anything in the world. And the only thing I think I like as much as making music is talking with people who are just as passionate about it. For sure. And this has been my my pill, you know, if That's you will. That's amazing, man. It's gotten me to, to not... I mean, I, I smoke weed. I do my, th- I like my, my psychedelics, but right, right. nothing that, that... We should get into that. Dude, we should definitely get into that. <laughs> um, I just have nothing else that I rely on outside of this. Yeah. Um, and the community, dude. I, I made 90% of my closest friends in the past 15 years I've made in the past five months. Easy. Wow. Um, and That's people incredible, like man. Danny and David and, and Trent and Christian and all these people right. who who've been so good to me and, and Kyle, I mean, pink slip, he, he bet on me. He, he did something so much for me that he did not need to do. Mm-hmm. And when you start having stuff like that and you start having the people screaming your name, it's a lot easier to deal with the bullshit. It starts, you start learning that it's worth it. Right. And that's really all this is, is doing as much as you can to learn that you're doing the right thing. Absolutely. What would you tell somebody who is where you were at while you were sitting in Montana? Oof. Find what you love. Find find what makes you feel whole, no matter what it is. That's that's healthy, obviously. Yeah. Um, but yeah, chase that. Chase whatever that feeling is. That's what kept me alive, honestly. And that's like what I, why I'm still alive is because I found the one thing that I needed to chase. For every single person, it's different. Um, and I guess. Stay true to that and also surround yourself with people that understand that about yeah. you and that, that are complementary that, to that, you Absolutely. know? I think that's so important, especially, like, being an artist now in L.A. Like, I truly now felt like I have found my people like Will, who's over there, and, and, good dude. and shout out Slim Dan. He's like, dude. He, man, that guy's like, I will give Danny 
he's like my mentor. He's like my big brother. Dude, he's unreal. Yeah, he's taught me so much about songwriting and just like the craft in general. And then my other producer, Ryan. And it's just like I found like my people that I make, which, sorry, I'm going off the original question. No, yeah, question. you're okay. Keep going. Uh, I, I would just say like make music with your friends. Yeah, like, find the people that are willing to bet on you. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And for bet on you, not on just your art. Yeah. And that's a big part of it. You know, all these people, if you stop making music today, yeah. wouldn't love you any less. Yeah. And that's how you know you found the right people. Absolutely. Um, we we gotta wrap this up in a second, but I wanna I wanna I wanna get one more person on to come 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 talk about his experience with you because it sounds yeah, like he's we'll been hop on here. Come on. He's been a uh, let me give some backstory really please, quick. Please, please. So I met Will has it been a year, dude? No. Almost a year. Um, and it was like this instant thing, man. We were like in a session together and I was like, this is my guy. And then I remember just inviting him over. Mm -hmm. I was like, dude, you like want to just like come over and hang? I don't know. I just like never will hit random people up to be like, yo, come hang, like talk yeah. about music, whatever. And that was like one of my favorite conversations I've ever had in LA. Um, or just in life that first time we hung out and we've just been super close ever since. And I am a very big believer in Will's art and it I think he believes in me too, maybe. We're gonna have to get you on your own episode as well. Try that's, to scoot in just so you can that's get a little what bit I was on, saying, yeah. on video. It's it's kinda tight. We'll get into But Will and I He's there if you can't see him. <laughs> well <laughs> hey, here, I'll scoot over. Oh, you're fine. Will and I perform together and he is the best guitar player that I know. So you're a guitar player? Um yeah, I guess here, maybe talking to his actually. I don't know if that one's on. Okay. I think. Yeah, I, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's kind of where I started my journey with uh, drums and guitar, much like yourself at a young yeah. age. Um, but How, how'd you guys meet originally? What would you What did you say? We met in a session actually. In a session for another, a different artist, and uh, I was like hosting it. I produce as well, so I was like hosting the session, and then. Uh, Mikey came in and we just kind of like clicked. It's, I was like, I think we both were just kind of like, oh, this is crazy. This, this is yeah. Like what? Is I guess like what I thought we were gonna be doing yeah. off the jump. You know what yeah. I mean? Kinda Absolutely. Just like, this is exactly. Um, it's just what we wanted to be. to be doing, like in sessions and stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? And well, now we write like almost every day. For him to to I mean to bring you and most people don't feel comfortable talking in front of other people. That's that seems to be everybody's mm -hmm. toughest point with this type of stuff. Mm -hmm. And for him to bring you and also want you to come on and, and bet on you like that, it sounds like you guys are really showing what it what you need to, to find in LA to make this work. You gotta yeah. find the people that are that are there for you that you feel comfortable with in, in any situation. And and I just wanted to shine some light on that because I think that's that's a really fucking cool thing to have. And yeah. again, yeah, we'll, I mean, we're gonna we gotta so get much. to your own episode because I got I some questions that. for you. Yeah, absolutely. Oh my gosh, anytime. And uh, <laughs> I don't know. He, I'm, I'm happy you uh, brought me on. That's cool. Anytime you compliment Will, he's like, oh my gosh, that's crazy. <laughs> You're like, no, bro, you real. know that this is true. Like, what are you <laughs> saying, man? I would love to. Thank you. I yeah, will make that happen. We gotta start wrapping this up, but dude, you're fucking incredible i'm so happy that that you came Appreciate by and i got so to talk much, to you you're a fucking you're the you're the man you are i'm like um, this is insane thank you i appreciate you guys and and i appreciate you coming on and for for that kid who's maybe in a wilderness program right now or, or sitting in their small town or whatever whatever it feels like they're caged at that moment just keep pushing you got this if you if you don't like your 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 situation learn something new from it learn something new during it and, and and use it as as your power use it as your as your fuel you got this everybody thank you oh, dude yeah. i i can't thank you enough appreciate you man and to everybody listening i'm mikey ferrari and this is an experiment goodbye everybody thank you dude yeah. Woo! the experience is the experiment <laughs>